Today on Hands On Photography, we're going to talk some eye popping portraits. That's right, it's going to be beautiful. Y'all stay tuned. This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable as always, just doing what I do on this lovely podcast. That I like to sit down and share different tips and tricks to help you be a better photographer as well as a better post processor. I really do enjoy doing this every week, folks, because this craft is so much fun. And quite frankly, I believe anybody can do it. And if this is the kind of content that you're interested in, go ahead and just hit subscribe and whatever podcast application you're enjoying this on. We're available on all of them, folks. That's uh, Apple Podcasts. That's uh, Google, whatever theirs is called. Uh, and that's also YouTube. That's on Spotify. It's all, all of those platforms out there. We're available on them. Or you can just go to the website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography. And you'll see all of our subscription options there, as well as our previous episodes and show notes. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. All right. So I've been speaking with you folks about shooting portraits and really trying to, to help you make your 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 model just shine. You know, if you're going to be able to do a, a, a portrait photograph of friend, family or, or, or you've got your first client, I've been doing my best to give you tips and tricks and ideas to capture those portraits and just make them look amazing. Well, we're going to continue to talk about that uh, regarding portraits and just just step it up one more notch and just iterate a little bit, if you will. Uh, so this this is something that you can use for any type of portrait, whether it's high key or, or low key or, or just uh, even certain action shots. You know, it just sort of depends on... Um, just sort of depends on the, the, the lighting and depends on the, the, the pose and subject at hand at that time. But yeah, check out episodes 53 through 56, I believe, where I walk through a bunch of different types of uh, portraits and how to shoot them. Uh, but now I want to piggyback on a previous discussion where we're going to do some selective adjustments. And that selective adjustments is just taking the time to notice what's going on with your model in particularly their facial expressions, and even more particularly, the eyes. So folks, I, I've tried to stress this uh, uh, so many times that if you're taking photographs of people, the number one thing to do is get the eyes in focus. There's no exceptions. I don't care if they have on the coolest hat. I don't care if they have on the coolest shirt or beautiful brooch or necklace or whatever. If their eyes are out of focus, it will totally distract and your, your image just won't look as good. But if you get those eyes nice and sharp, it's going to make that image. And even more so with this selective adjustment, it's going to draw more views and more eyeballs to your image and just really make you shine and, and show off your skills as a photographer and as a post processor. So today we're going to take a look at just some eye popping por portraiture and how to really just <laughs> essentially make the eyes pop inside of your portrait photographs. I have two different examples here. I'm going to show you one of them for sure. Maybe I'll show you the other example next week. Hmm. Should I? I don't know. We'll see. Depends on how much time we got here together. So let's go ahead and open up our first image here inside of Lightroom. And as again, we're going to we're going to reference back to our previous episodes, like episode, I believe it was episode 14 and 15, where we talked about selective adjustment. So here we go. Let's go ahead and take a quick second to pop into Lightroom. All right. So what we have here, this is a stock image that I got from Creative Commons. This is not mine, but it is Creative Commons. So I am authorized to be able to use this uh, how I need to for this particular episode. And this portrait, I did not shoot this. This thing is this is really, really good. This is a beautiful portrait of this young lady. And um, the lighting is great. The post processing is great. Uh, I love the shallow depth of field that we have where you can see it sort of fades off into a little bit of softness right there next to her ears, you know, where her eyes and nose and mouth are just beautifully in focus here. But we can really set this apart by just adding a little more pop to this model's eyes. And 
in this case, this works really, really well because the model has a blue tint eyes. And quite frankly, uh, this is a little secret. Maybe I shouldn't tell y'all, but blue eyes, they really do stand out the best. They, they, they just do. And unfortunately, blue eyes scare the crap out of me when I see them. I don't I don't know why I'm a grown man. But every time I see people with blue eyes in public or on TV or what have you, I, I never look them straight in the eyes. I just can't do it. I, it, it, it wigs me out just a touch. So if I ever meet you in person, you have blue eyes and we get to talk for a conversation, just know right out the gate, I'm not looking at your eyes, even though I am looking at you and I'm speaking to you. Okay, that's out the way. So what I want to do is let's take the, this, this model's eyes and just really enhance what's going on here. So if I zoomed in just a touch here, I can, I'm giving myself a little bit more space to work with by zooming in and let's just take a couple things in consideration. We have the detail of the eyes and we have the colors of the eyes and inside of Lightroom, we have the amazing adjustment brush or K on the keyboard. And it allows us to get into a bunch of different options to do some selective adjustments. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit K on my keyboard and it's gonna give me this option over here on the right hand side and it says an effect. Now this says clarity, but I can click this little drop down and choose whatever I want to choose. Uh, but right now this is currently set to clarity and you can see that it has the clarity slider already adjusted for me. So let's go ahead and just work with clarity first. So I'm gonna drop a pin somewhere over here next to the subject, just sort of out of the way like so. And take my Wacom tablet because you folks know how I feel about Wacom tablets. These things are so essential in photo retouching and just make things a lot easier. You can do this with a mouse, but I highly recommend getting about $70 US and buying yourself a Wacom tablet. You, you'll you thank me. All right. So I've dropped the pen here and I'm just going to paint a little more clarity and sharpness into this eye where I see fit. So I'm just gonna grab this mouse cursor here with my little Wacom tablet and just paint in the eyelashes a little more just to make them come out a little bit more. And if you look over here on the right hand side again where the adjustment brush settings are, you have some options here. You have the feather option, you have the flow and you have the density. Notice that my flow and density is not set to 100% because I think having it turned below 100% gives me a little bit more clarity to, uh, not clarity, a little bit more freedom to just have some more touch with it and not just necessarily keep it super digital. It gives me a little bit more of an analog feel, just like a regular brush. Okay, so keep that in mind. Your settings may vary on that, but just work with that to your feel and your touch and, and you'll, you'll, you'll see a big difference. So I like to brush in some clarity here on these eyelashes, not too much. And then I'm gonna also brush in some clarity right here around the iris of the eye because there's some great detail there. So why not bring that detail out? I can make the brush a little bit larger by pressing the right bracket key and just brush a couple times right there on the eye. And a good trick with the adjustment brush is the mask overlay tool. And if you press O on your keyboard or go down here to the bottom left, there's a little marker in a checkbox that says show selected mask overlay. So I'm going to hit O and it shows me exactly where I've been painting just in case I sort of forget where I've been painting. So I'm just going to continue to paint a little bit more here on this iris. Try to bring that out some like that. Okay. And now I will hit O to turn that off. Do another look, quick look. And that looks looks okay but I have the freedom to adjust the clarity even more just by selecting the sliders over here on the right. So I'm gonna select this slider, push it up, looks good. And I'm even gonna take a hold of this here uh, texture slider and push that up some too. So it's standing out a good bit more from a detail standpoint, right? Looking good. Okay, so I'll hit O again just to make sure I've painted where I need it to paint. And 
I see a little bit of paint right here next to the, the pin when we dropped it. And that happens quite often. It's easy to fix that as well as fix any of your uh, pain and mistakes. You can just erase where you paint it if you erase, if you paint it too much in certain areas. To do so, you just hold down the alt key, <clears throat> the alt key on your keyboard or option key if you're on Mac and it changes the cursor. So I'm just gonna brush away where I brush too much, particularly over there on that pen. And if you want to make that eraser a little bit larger, continue to hold down Alt or Option and use those same bracket keys, that right bracket key or left bracket key to adjust the size of your eraser. So I'm gonna brush a little more around the tips of the eyelashes. There we go. And keep in mind, even the eraser has the same sensitivity and, and, and more of an analog feel to it because you can adjust the, the feather and you can adjust the flow and, and so forth, just like you would with the regular brush. All right. So I've brushed that away, taken that off, and that looks better already just because there's more detail. So now I'm going to add another brush and let's bring out the color of the eye. So I'm going to click the new button up here in this inside of this adjustment brush panel and i'm going to select let's say saturation because she already has eye eye color anyway let's see if we can just boost the saturation to bring that out so i'm going to drop the pin over here as my saturation button and i'm going to brush right over this iris and as i brush over the iris you notice the, the color is starting to get a little bit more intensified, giving it a little bit more saturation. And that looks fine, but I think we can step it up a notch. Let's, let's, let's just uh, move that slider even more and just keep pushing it, keep pushing that saturation slider. All right, so now do you see what's happening? It's not necessarily blue anymore. That's because there's a lot of things going on here. The color grading that's being used as well as the lighting. So the, the camera sees this as a particular color, a particular hue. We can fix that. Well, not necessarily. I'm not going to call it fix, but we can adjust that and adapt to that. But this extra slider up here called the hue slider right here in the same menu. And we can just drag this to a different hue and watch it change the eye color as we slide it. See, now our eyes are a whole different color to, up to green. And as I continue to slide it more towards a bluer hue, I get a much more intense blue uh, iris there. But unfortunately, there's a little bit of a mistake. Some of the um, blue spill is happening right there on our eyelid. We don't want that. So again, we'll press Alt or Option on our keyboard and we will erase the excess there. Just erase it away. Nothing to it. And even just trying to clean up some of the edges there like that. We'll put some of the color back right here. Okay. Really, really, really intense. And because this is an adjustment brush, you have some freedom with dealing with the intensity on it to where if you're if it's overdone, it's overdone. I'm overdoing it right now because looking at this over YouTube or any other podcast application, it's hard to see it unless I overdo it. So let's back out of this screen a little bit and take a look at it from the regular view. And there we have one interesting color blue eye, which is clearly overdone in my opinion, but we can fix that. So let's drop the saturation down just a touch. Pulling it back slowly. There we go. There we go. Now that looks so much better. It does look like I missed a spot right next to a pupil. Easy fix. Zoom in some more. Grab your brush and just paint it in right there too. Very nice. So I'm going to zoom out now and I'll go ahead and do the other eye. And because we have the, you know, the, the analog feel with our Wacom tablet, I can just lightly brush over here on the other eye and just, and still have the same natural feel to it. 
you know. And if I still feel like I did a little too much, just hold down the Alt key. And just dab away where you brushed too much. There we go. So now let's back out of this. Now look at that. Isn't that, oh, looks so much better. Granted, it is scary to have those daggum blue eyes, but that gets a, a, just a tremendous amount of attention because of the eyes. And people are definitely going to reach out to you and ask you about, wow, those eyes. Was it like that when you shot the image? Whatever. They're going to they're gonna love this image. So let's take a look at the before. And this is the after. Actually, it looks a little bit better if I turn the lights out. So let's turn the lights out. This is the before, which is still a beautiful image. And this is the after with the updated iris colors. All right. Well, I'm going to call it a, a, a day for, for this week's episode, but let me just give you a tease. Next time I'm going to talk about this image here because, you know, not everybody knows who that is. That's Queen Pruitt. But... She doesn't have blue eyes. What exactly can I do with this image and her eyes, her type of eyes to really make it stand out? Yes, we can adjust the clarity and sharpness to, to just really make them stand out. But there's even another little step that we can do. And we'll talk about that on another episode. So, yeah, that's a tease. <laughs> All right, folks, that's going to do it for this week. Thank you so much for watching Hands On Photography. I really, really do appreciate all of the support. If you have any questions, feedback, image critiques or requests or things of that nature from the show, uh, reach out to me. Hop at twit.tv. That's a good old fashioned email. Works best for me. Hop at twit.tv. Or feel free to give me a tag and follow over on the social medias. I am Ant underscore Pruitt on Twitter. I am also Ant underscore Pruitt on Instagram. Having a lot of fun talking to folks on social media and sharing some behind the scenes stuff in my random day to day life. And uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a shout and give me a follow over there. All right, folks. So until next time, be sure to give me a rating, a like and share and subscribe and all of that good stuff to help push this podcast up in the ratings. It really does mean a lot. And you all safely safely continue to create and dominate and i'll catch you next time y'all take care hey if you like tech news but you also like hearing about it from the people who are actually writing the stories well i've got a show for you it's called tech news weekly and it's me jason howell along with my co-host micah Sargent. every week we invite the people making and breaking the biggest tech news stories from around the web onto this show uh, to talk to us about it. It's a lot of fun. You should check it out. Tech News Weekly can be found at twit.tv slash TNW every Thursday. We'll see you there.